Stay safe. Stay healthy. Hi, y'all. Miss y'all, too. God bless you. See you soon. Hello, and welcome to worship with St. Paul's United Methodist Church of Mendota Heights, Minnesota. I'm Amy Jo Burr. I'm the pastor of St. Paul's, and I welcome you to join us on this Kids Together Sunday. It's the tradition at St. Paul's that on the second Sunday of every month, the children and the youth of our congregation join us in leadership of worship. And even as we've switched temporarily to a video format, our children and our youth are patiently sending in videos of themselves reading scripture and leading prayer in order to help provide worship leadership for our community. We are so proud of our young people. So please join us to get today as we worship together. And no matter what your age, I'm sure that God has a special blessing in store just for you. Before we begin, I just have one word of announcement. And that is, I want to say thank you to all who generously financially support the mission of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Through your generosity, we were able to complete our apportioned giving during the year 2020. Now, apportioned giving is our shared ministry that we do both locally and across the world as one big denomination. And there's many pieces to that. But what I want to highlight today is 
the Fund for Africa University. Africa University is a United Methodist University on the continent of Africa. And through the Apportioned Giving Fund, we are able to help support 1,800 students from 29 different countries. Their education is specially designed to help them be able to return to their home countries and focus on God's work of alleviating poverty, building peace, creating stability, and driving community development. And so with a strong education, they are able to do this better. So thank you all who support our apportioned giving and our ministry as a whole as St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Your giving makes a big difference in the life of others. And now, as we begin our time of worship together, let us begin with prayer. Prayer of Invocation. God, our Mother and Father, we come to you as children. Be with us as we learn to see one another with new eyes. Hear one another with new hearts and treat one another in a new way. Amen. Our opening hymn is, Oh How I Love Jesus. Please join me as we sing. Words will appear on the screen and Lane will lead us in song. Today's Bible memory verse is from John 12, verse 26. Whoever serves me must follow me. Good morning. What do you think of when you see a heart? Most of us would probably say that you think of love. But who do you love? Do you love your parents, your brother or your sisters, your teachers? How about your best friends? It's easy to love these people because they love us too. But are there any boys or girls that might not be nice to you? Has anyone ever said something about you that hurt your feelings? Do you love those boys and girls? Jesus wants us to love everyone, even the people who might not be nice to us or might even be mean to us. But why should we love our enemies? Jesus said that when we love our enemies, we are acting like children of God. It demonstrates the love of God to others and sets a good example of Jesus for us to follow. If we only love those who love us, will God reward us for that? If we are only kind to our friends, what's so great about that? Everybody does that. 
There's something called the golden rule in the Bible. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it says, in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. It's called the golden rule because of how important it is. It's easy to love those who are nice to you, but it's important to show love to everyone. Jesus loves a little children, all the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black, and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Today's theme of the day is disciples, and disciples are students. We learn about Jesus by reading stories about Jesus from the Bible. So today we are reading the the story, The Disciples, from our Spark Story Bible. The Disciples. Jesus told everyone he met, repent, stop the bad things you are doing and start doing good. One day, Jesus was at a seashore and a crowd gathered to listen to hear what he had to say. Jesus hopped onto a fishing boat so more people could see him and hear him. Thanks for letting me use your boat, Jesus said. Then he said to the fishing brothers, Simon and Andrew, I want to thank you with lots of fish. Throw out your nets. We'll try, they sighed. Simon and Andrew put their nets into the water. But we fished all night and caught absolutely nothing, they explained to Jesus. Suddenly they felt their nets tug. They were overflowing with fish. Rip, pop snap. The nets were so full that they were breaking. The brothers pulled in so many fish that their boat started to sink. Help! They called to their friends in another boat. We have too many fish. James and John rushed to their rescue. The weight of the fish almost took their boat under too. They knew that their new friend, Jesus, must be someone special. He was the one who told them to catch those fish. Hey, Simon and Andrew. Hey, James and John, follow me, Jesus called to them. Let's catch people instead of fish. Splash! The two sets of brothers dropped their nets into the sea. They were not fishermen anymore. Now they were disciples. Now they would follow Jesus. Jesus met a tax collector at his office. Hey, Matthew, follow me, Jesus called. Let's collect people instead of money. Clink. Matthew, the tax collector, dropped his coins to the ground. He was not a tax collector anymore. Now he was a disciple. Now he would follow Jesus. Jesus met seven others that day. Philip... Bartholomew, Thomas, another James, Thaddeus, another Simon, and Judas. Follow me, Jesus said to each of them. Crash, boing, boom, they all stopped and dropped what they were doing. Now they were disciples. Now they would follow Jesus. Jesus and his 12 friends, the disciples, shared the workload with many other followers, including Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna. No matter where he went, Jesus called for men and women, boys and girls, to drop what they were doing and follow him. Disciples are students. It's one of the ways that we learn about our faith. But disciples are also followers. Another way that we learn about our faith is by following the example of Jesus. Have you ever played the game, follow the leader? You know how this game goes. The person at the front of the line does something and then everybody else along the line does the same thing. The front person hops on one foot, so everyone else hops on one foot. 
This is a way of imitating, of following the example of another person. Sometimes being a disciple is a little bit like playing follow the leader. Jesus is the leader and we follow his example in how we live our lives. Now being a disciple isn't the only thing we learn by example. Can you think of a time when you've learned something not from a book, but by following someone's example? I was thinking about things I've learned by example, and I thought about knitting. I didn't read a book or take a class on how to knit. I sat down next to my mom, who knows how to knit, and we both had needles, and we both had yarn, and she showed me how to move the needles and how to move the yarn. And then I would do the same thing with my set of needles and my set of yarn. I'd follow her example. And then she'd show me how to do another stitch with her needles and her yarn. And I would do the same thing with mine. And by following her example, I learned how to knit. There's many things we do learn by following the example. And when we're disciples, we follow the example of Jesus. Jesus shows kindness, so we show kindness. Jesus makes time for prayer, so we make time for prayer. Jesus gathers other people to follow along, so we invite our friends with us to come follow Jesus. And then we can all follow Jesus together. In today's story, Jesus calls the disciples to follow him. And we also call people and invite people to come grow closer to God together and follow Jesus as one church family. Dear God, bless our church in a new way. Help us be like Jesus every day. Open our minds and our hearts to learn. Open our lips to praise and our hands to serve. Open our eyes to see the people you love and welcome them in to be here with us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespassers, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James son of Zebedee and his brother John, the boat with, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. In today's gospel passage, Jesus says to the disciples, follow me. And the disciples do. They follow Christ and they go on a spiritual journey. As they follow Christ's example, they draw closer to God and their whole lives change as they follow Christ and use their gifts for the coming kingdom. Follow me, Christ says, and I will make you fish for people. And one of the exciting things for me about this gospel passage is that Jesus is still calling us, even today. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling me. And Jesus is saying, come, follow me. Use your gifts for the common good. Come, follow me. Be my disciple. And when you follow me, I will show you how to draw closer to God. And so we follow Christ's example. Just as we talked with the children today about following the leader, we follow the example of Christ and how we live lives of faith in this world. Jesus set an example for us about how to draw close to God in prayer. The Gospel of Mark reminds us how early in the morning Jesus would withdraw to a secluded place and there he would pray. 
He would nurture his relationship with the divine presence. And so we too pause and take time to pray, take time to build our relationship with the divine presence, to build our relationship with a God who loves us so much. We follow Jesus in other ways too. We remember the many stories of the kindness and compassion of Christ, how Christ was involved with healing people, how he touched them and made them whole, how he showed kindness and how he showed compassion, reaching out to all those who were in need. And so we also follow in Christ's footsteps, trying to shine the light of God's love to all of our community, reaching out in ministry to all those who are in need. We follow the example of Christ. Another really exciting thing for me in this passage is that Christ doesn't say to these fishermen, follow me and I'll teach you how to never fish again. No, instead he says, follow me and I'll show you how to fish for people. In other words, there's something about their particular gifts and experience as fishermen that is going to translate well into gathering others to follow God. Their particular unique gifts are needed. And the Bible tells us that we all have different gifts, unique gifts, and that each of them is important and each of them plays a special role in building the kingdom of God. And so I tell you, God is calling you to use your gifts now, today, for the common good. God is calling you to a life of discipleship and it doesn't matter what your gifts happen to be, there is a place where they are needed in God's kingdom. Are you a teacher? God needs you to teach the next generation. Do you have a green thumb? God needs you to farm and to feed the world. Do you have a strong understanding of ethics? God needs you to practice law and to see that justice is done in our world. Do you have a heart to serve the greater good? God needs you to run for office and be a public servant or politician who works for the common good. Do you have a gift of healing? When you touch another person, do you do so with the love of Christ that helps to make them well? Then maybe God is calling you to be a physician, to be a nurse, to be a healthcare professional of some type. There are so many ways that God is calling each of us right here and right now. What is God saying to your heart? Whatever your gift is today, I know it's needed in God's kingdom. And whatever your gift is to today, Jesus has one simple message for you. Follow me. Christ calls us to a life of discipleship in which we follow the example of Christ and in which we use our gifts in order to bring us a little bit closer to the coming kingdom of God. And right now today, I invite you to follow in a new way, to respond to Christ's invitation. Do you hear the voice of Jesus calling? Go ahead and answer. Answer and say, I will. Today, I will follow you on a discipleship journey that will change my life. This is Christ's calling to us to follow as faithful disciples. Amen. God invites all to come to the communion table who wish to live in reconciliation and peace with God and with neighbor. It doesn't matter if you're a member of this church or of any church, if you feel God calling you to participate in this holy ritual, then you are welcome at God's table. The communion prayer which we pray today 
will consecrate not only the bread and juice here with me in the video, but also the bread and juice which you hold in your hand. Please join me in this prayer. Our communion response today is we share God's table. Let us pray together. God breathed life into a beautiful world with farmland, mountains, prairies, rivers, streams, and enough food for all. With thankful hearts, we share God's table. God loves each one of us and teaches us to love and help one another too. With thankful hearts, we share God's table. Jesus called disciples to follow him into the world, preaching and healing. He called them to put down their fishing nets and join him in fishing for people instead. He brought them to a special upper room where they shared bread and wine together. With thankful hearts, we share God's table. God calls us to share God's love and an invitation to God's table with all the world. With thankful hearts, we share God's table. God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit who transforms this regular bread and juice into God's holy meal to be shared in communion with each other. With thankful hearts, we share God's table. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Christ, poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. We give thanks for this holy meal of communion. May God's blessings be upon all who come to the communion table, and may we each be nourished by God's Spirit. It's that time. Who remembers the Bible memory verse? Whoever serves me must follow me. Whoever serves me must follow me. Whoever serves me must follow me.
And now, O oh Lord, may we believe in our hearts what we have said with our lips, and may we practice in our lives what we believe in our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.